calculations using specific heat. Uh, anytime when you see a change in the degrees Celsius or a change in temperature at all, you pull out the heat equation. Now this is your master equation and you can always rearrange it to what you want. So the heat equation is heat, can be either calories or joules, and you've got grams, delta T, and delta means the change in temperature in degrees Celsius, and the specific heat, which is calories per gram degrees Celsius, or it's joules per gram degrees Celsius. If you want to know the specific heat of something, you rearrange this equation, and if you do, you'll get specific heat comes over, and you get heat over grams delta T. Now we can work some examples out of the text, and we'll start with problem number 33 on page 68. So problem 33 on page 68 says calculate the specific heat in joules per gram per degree Celsius for the following, and it's got three of them. And we're going to use joules for this problem. And so the first one is a 13.5 gram sample of zinc is heated from 24.2 degrees Celsius to 83.6 degrees Celsius that absorbs 312 joules of heat. Now the first thing we should always notice on a problem like this is that we have a change in temperature. And just like we said back here, anytime you see a change in temperature you want to use the heat equation and there you go. So let's do that. Let's just write down our heat equation. And we should always just do that. Just write down the heat equation and go from there. Okay. Now we are looking for the specific heat and there's the specific heat. So that should tell us right off the bat. We should go ahead and just solve for specific heat. So if we take grams delta T and divide both sides by grams delta T, we'll end up with heat divided by grams delta T is equal to the specific heat, which is what we're looking for because we want to calculate the specific heat. Okay, so now what we do is we're going to go ahead and inventory what we have and what we don't have. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is just work from left to right. Do we have the heat? Hmm, there it is, 312 joules is the heat. So sure enough, we have the heat. Do we have the grams of the sample? Mm -hmm. There it is. So sure enough, we have the grams. And do we have the delta T? We don't have the delta T directly, but we do have the temperature. So we can go ahead and say, well, delta T is the larger number, because we like that it keeps things positive in 131, minus the smaller number, 24.2 degrees Celsius. And we pull out our calculator, and we go 83.6 minus 24.2 and we get 59.4 so sure enough we have our delta T and we don't have the specific heat because that's what we're asking for now anytime you have an equation that's rearranged like this all you have to do once you have all the parts verified you you just plug and chug you just write them down so what do we have we have heat and that is 312 joules, so we say 312 joules. It's coming right off this equation right here, the rearranged ones. And then we have the grams. Well, that's 13.5 grams. And then we have delta T. Well, we already figured it out, and it's 59.4 degrees Celsius. And we just need to put that in our calculator now. So we go... 312 divided by parentheses. It's very important to put the bottom part in parentheses. 13.5 times 59.4 close parentheses and we hit equals and I get 0 0.38908 and there's some extra digits and that is joules per gram degree Celsius. Since none of the units canceled, we have to carry over the units that we had. So that is joules per gram degrees Celsius. Now, as always, we should follow up by figuring out how many significant figures we should use. And we go back to our original problem up here. And we see that 
we have three significant figures there we have three significant figures three significant figures we have three significant figures all the way through and strictly speaking when we do the subtraction here we should have used uh, the same number of decimal places so there's one decimal place one decimal place there's one decimal place but we have three three and three and three so our answer should have three and it's three eight nine and there's a zero there's nothing to round up we leave it alone joules grams degrees Celsius and we're done okay the next problem problem 33 page 68 uh, subsection B uh, once again, we're calculating the specific heat in joules per gram degree Celsius. And this time we have a 48.2 gram sample of metal that absorbs 345 joules. Heated from 35.0 degrees Celsius to 57.9 degrees Celsius. And once again, first thing we should always do when we see a temperature change like this is just go ahead and write down the heat equation. But once again, we're just being asked for, this, for the specific heat. So we should rearrange this equation into specific heat, which is heat divided by grams delta T. And so we should ask ourselves, what parts do we have? And so we check it and we say, do we have the heat? Yeah, we sure do. It's 345 joules. There it is. We have the heat. Do we have the grams? Yes, we do. There they are. And do we have delta T? We don't, but we can go ahead and calculate it and we say delta T is a larger number minus a smaller number. And we take the difference here and we'll go 57.9 minus 35 and we get 22.9 degrees Celsius. One decimal place, one decimal place, our answer is in one decimal place, and that's what we're going to plug in there. So sure enough, we have delta T, so we have all the pieces to be able to calculate the specific heat. And so we should do that. So the specific heat is equal to the heat, well there it is, 345 joules, divided by the grams, that's 48.2 grams. And we should multiply it also out by the delta T, which is... 22.9 degrees Celsius and we just go ahead and plug that in our calculator and we got 345 divided by parentheses, parentheses are very important on the bottom keep all the bottom terms on the bottom times 22.9 close parentheses and I get 0 0.31256 joules per gram degrees Celsius because joules and grams degrees Celsius didn't cancel out and we should go ahead and do significant figures and it looks like we have three 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 and three so our final answer should have three significant figures and it's one two three and there's a five there since it's five or above we need to round up so it's 0 0.313 joules per gram degrees Celsius Problem 36, page 68. What is the amount of energy involved in each of the following? Now this is a little different from the previous one because we're not asking for the specific heat. We're asking for the calories given off when 85 grams of water cools from 45 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. But once again, what's the first thing our eyes should be drawn to is the fact that there's a temperature change. We're going from 45 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius, so we should think heat equation, which is grams, delta T, specific heat. Okay. Now, we're being asked for the amount of energy involved, and that's really asking for the amount of heat that's being given off to cool it down. So we should go ahead and do an inventory. Do we have the heat? No, we don't, because that's what's being asked for. Do we have the grams? Why, yes, we do. We have 85 grams. How about delta T? Mm, we don't have delta T, but we can calculate delta T. Delta T is 45 degrees Celsius minus 25 degrees Celsius, and that is 20 degrees Celsius with two significant figures, 2SF, or one decimal, no decimal places, okay? So we've got delta T. How about the specific heat? The specific heat of the water is not in this problem, but 
we know what the specific heat of water is, we should always remember that the specific heat of water is real simple. It is one. It is one calorie per gram degrees Celsius. It's defined that way. So this is a defined number. It doesn't even count for significant figures. And so we do have uh, specific heat. We don't have to rearrange the equation because we're asked for calories that are given off. Our specific heat is in calories, so we're good. So all we have to do now is just plug and chug. So we go heat is grams, that's 85 grams. What's our delta T? Well, we calculated it is 20 degrees Celsius. And what's our specific heat of water? Well, we remember that or we can look it up. It's one calorie per gram degrees Celsius and we just plug it into our calculator so we go 85 times 20 that's 1700 calories now what we should do is go ahead and do significant figures we have two significant figures there and we have two and two so our final answer should have two and we do now keep in mind that if I was to put a decimal point there that would make it four significant figures but since we have the trailing zeros there it's actually two significant figures so our answer is still 1700 calories with two significant figures. The next problem, problem 36 page 68 uh, instead of asking for calories, this time it's asking for joules. How many joules are given off when 25 grams of water cools from 86 degrees Celsius to 61 degrees Celsius? So once again, we see a temperature change. So we should automatically reach out and get our heat equation, which is heat, grams, delta T, specific heat. And we're being asked for the amount of energy, so that is a heat, so we can leave it like it is and we should do an inventory to see what we have. So do we have the grams? Why, yes we do. Do we have the delta T? No, but we can calculate it. So delta T is 86 degrees Celsius minus 61 degrees Celsius, and that is 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we got the delta T, that's no problem. And what's the specific heat? Well, we should know what the specific heat of water. The specific heat of water in calories is one. One calorie per gram degree Celsius. But we're being asked for joules and the conversion factor from joules to calories is 4.184 joules equals one calorie and this is an exact relationship. So we can actually say 4.184 joules times per calorie. Calories cancel and so the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules. Calories cancel per gram degrees Celsius. Don't forget to carry over your units. Okay, So now we have the specific heat since we're being asked for joules and so all we have to do now is just put it in our equation. So the grams, well we got 25 grams of water we have a delta T. It is 25 degrees Celsius. We calculated it. And we have the specific heat in joules per gram de grams degrees Celsius, which is right here. Grams cancel, grams cancel, degrees Celsius, degrees Celsius. We're left with joules. And we just need to put it in our calculator. And we go 25 times 25 times 4.184 and I get 2615 joules and of course to finish up this problem we should come back and uh, do significant figures and I see I have two up here two there two there so our final answer should have two significant figures and that is 2600 joules and our final example from this section is that we want to know the kilocalories absorbed when 5 kilograms of water warms from 22 degrees Celsius to 28 degrees Celsius. Well, first off, we know that we have a change in temperature, so we, obviously we still need to write down our heat equation. So heat is grams, delta T, specific heat, and we'll do an inventory. Do we have the grams? 
No, we have five kilograms. So we can go from kilograms to grams, so we'll say five kilograms. It's a thousand grams per kilogram. Kilograms cancel. And that is five thousand grams. So we have the grams. How about delta T? Well, we don't have it, but we should, sure can calculate it. Delta T is 28 degrees Celsius minus 22 degrees Celsius, and it is 6 degrees Celsius. So we have that. How about the specific heat? Well, we have the specific heat of the water. It is, and since we're dealing with calories, you won't have to mess with kcals just yet. We can convert it at the very end. And so the specific heat of water is 1 calorie per gram degrees Celsius. So we have the specific heat. And so we plug it in, and so we go, all right, what's the grams? So we calculate it out. It's not kilograms. It needs to be in grams. And so that's 5,000 grams, our delta T. There it is, 6 degrees Celsius. And our specific heat, 1 calorie per gram degrees Celsius. And we get 30,000 calories. Now we want our answer in kcals, or kilocalories, and there is 1,000 calories in a kilocalorie. That's what kilo means, it means 1,000. So there's 1,000 kilocalorie, 1,000 calories in a kilocalorie. So we say 30,000 calories times one kcal, or a kilocalorie, per 1,000 calories, and that is 30 kilocalories. And we should go through and do our uh, our uh, significant figures. We have one there, we have two there, so our answer should have one, and that answer, in fact, does have one significant figure, since that zero is a trailing zero and there's no decimal place there.